Hi everyone. My name is Dave Gokte and I lead a web consulting team for Google. In my role, we consult with top brands from all sorts of industries, but with one thing in common. They all have a significant web presence and are continuing to grow their capabilities on the web. So in many ways, companies like Walmart, Wayfair, Fandango, and Spotify have completely changed the way we either buy goods online, buy movie tickets online, or listen to music online, all using the power of the web. Now, did you know there are 4 billion internet users around the world? which means half of the world's population is now online. Here's an interesting fact. A quarter billion new users came online for the first time in 2017. Now, for a lot of these people, their phone is their first and primary computing device, as well as access point to the internet. Now, the web is ubiquitous today in practically every device we use, whether it's our phone, our TV, our watch, our refrigerator, even our car. But the expectation of the user is still the same. One click, and any content interaction should be available. No friction and no install needed. Now let's go back to where it all started. Browsers first started becoming popular in circa 1993, when desktops were your primary computing devices. Now back then, it was all about destinations. Using the browser meant you had a web destination in mind. You fired up the browser, you entered the URL, and got access to the information you needed. When you needed to access something else, you did this all over again. This was a deliberate, simple, and linear process. Since then, technology and user behavior has changed so much. The web used to be about destinations that people remembered and went to. However, the web is now transitioning to a post-destination era. You don't necessarily enter URLs here, and behaviors are different. Now imagine this. What if the browser isn't the only way for users to connect with your website? At I.O., you're probably learning about all of these new platforms. We are in such an exciting age for developers with mobile phones, assistant-enabled devices, and many, many more devices. Input modalities have changed so much. It's not just keyboard and mouse anymore. Touch screens are everywhere, and now there's voice. So the question is, how does web development evolve to address this multitude of platforms? It's unrealistic to learn a new technology, a new API, and hire a new team every time a new form factor shows up. As developers, how do you make sure you're reaching your users here? Now, the good news is you're already doing it. There are many, many ways that the web can address these new form factors today, largely because of how interoperable it is. And that's the first superpower of the web. Your websites on the open web are already portable, for many of these new experiences, providing the content and apps that power these exciting new user patterns, technologies, and devices. So we're seeing a lot of this in the wild already. Let's look at a few examples. As we transition into a mobile-first world and grew a strong native app ecosystem, we have created many new engagement patterns, like Stories, for example. For those of you who don't know what Stories are, Stories is a new format, and it's a visual way to share your experiences and journeys online. They allow you to add videos and photos, but it can also add web links if you're a verified user. And with one swipe up, your web content is now embedded into this new pattern. Now note that this is just a regular website. Imagine if these web pages were actually built and optimized for this handoff. Now let's look at another example here. Let's look at the Assistant. One of the amazing things about Google Assistant is that a user can now use their voice to find compelling services and experiences. So say I could ask Home Hub for movie times or just engage the Google Assistant on my phone. And without having to install anything, the Assistant realizes that Fandango web app can fulfill my ticketing requests. Now at this point, I can transition to a touch interface and get deep linked straight into the web app user interface at the point of checkout. Now this just works. And it's the same URL supported experience that you publish to the web. How cool is that? And if you want more control over the experience, you can even write a dedicated assistant action like Walmart did. As you can see here, you can browse for items like this Apple and add them to your cart. And when the shopping journey is over, you can just click the link, which is deep links, straight into the progressive web app hosted at grocery.walmart.com at the point of checkout. Now, in the previous examples, you ended up in what looked like a traditional mobile browser experience. 
and there was a clean handoff. The second superpower of the web is how embeddable web content is. So instead of creating web content that a user uses a browser to go to page by page, your web content can now be embedded into experiences that meet users where they are already. Let's look at a few examples. The first example is Dynamic Mail. Dynamic Mail takes this to the whole new level by bringing modern web tech like interactive AMP content into email clients like Gmail. It provides senders with the ability to include more expressive and interactive content than conventional static emails. It also allows trusted senders to customize the message so that an email in a way becomes a miniature web app featuring capabilities that were not possible in the past. For example, a user may, all within the Gmail client, click a button or interact with a carousel and always see the most up-to-date content. Web content has always been part of the Android ecosystem for a long time via web views. Now what we are offering you today is a better way to do things than just using a web view. Recently, we launched Trusted Web Activities, which allows mobile web developers the best way to put full screen web content into their Android apps. Now, TWS let content creators quickly integrate web content and journeys into their Android existing apps, all with the performance and the assistive features of the Chrome browser. Now, of course, you must adhere to all Play Store policies here. Let's look at a third example. Embedding does not have to be limited to cross-platform. It could also mean blurring the lines of how you move from one page to another, all within the context of the same site. Now, this can drastically improve user experience of a single website built using multiple page architecture or MPAs. You can simply use a new web standard called Portals, which is like an iframe, but can be navigated to. Now, the example here illustrates how a Japanese publisher, Hatena Young Jump Web Comics, created this experience using portals for their Manga Reader website. The Manga Reader shows how at the end of one chapter, portals can pull up the next chapter seamlessly and make the transition smooth and seamless. This brings us to a last superpower. The web can be transformative. We are starting to see that the web is flexible and a strong community of developers are starting to think about how the web can transform from just a web of documents to a web of app and maybe even to a web of experiences entirely. Now, you're familiar with structured data. Structured data on your web page allows Google Search to create rich search results without you having to create the UI. But what if you wanted to customize the UI on Google Search without your open web content? That's where many apps come into play. This concept that the search team is exploring allows you to use the web as a way to publish interactive endpoints instead of pages. These are then flexible enough to transform natively into a first-party surface such as search. Now, the web doesn't have to host only flat content. In recent years, we have heard a lot about web VR and AR. And through advancement in technologies like WebGL and advanced browser rendering, it's now possible to show VR and AR experiences through your browser. You probably heard about our announcement related to Stadia, which is Google's new gaming platform built entirely upon this premises. And by accessing a URL, which is a basic building block of the web, you're completely transformed into this fully immersive 4K interactive gaming experience, all available through the browser, no install required. Now that's powerful. Now, just because your site works across form factors does not mean it is high quality and capable. As a developer, you have to make sure your web content is visible and usable, and you're keeping the user's journey in mind as you build this out. What use are these superpowers if you don't have instant capable and high quality experiences? Luckily, Google's web team is working hard to bring the latest capabilities to the browser and more, as you probably saw in this year's I.O. announcement. Our focus is on making sure the web is instant, it's capable, and safe for users. And through many announcements like AMP, PWA, performance budgets, portals, and trusted web activities, we are bringing that to the users. This is an exciting time to be a web developer. And developers, here's my challenge to you. What would you build if you knew that your user was one click, one tap, or just one voice search away? Thank you. Thank you.